So, hydraulic cylinder. Um, this has been requested a few times that I do a breakdown of a hydraulic cylinder. This uh, particular one, um, otherwise it's in good shape. The weld cracked at the end of the barrel here and it's leaking. And between the barrel and the seal kit and the time that it would take to do it, it's just more feasible to replace the cylinder. Um, yes, you could probably weld it and fix it, but I'm not a certified welder and we don't do that because we don't want to assume the liability. So that's where we're at. I got an otherwise decent cylinder that we could uh, do a quick demonstration on. Uh, I will caution, hydraulics are very dangerous, and if you don't know what you're doing, don't play with hydraulic cylinders. There's energy that could be stored um, if you want to lose your lunch. Uh, Google hydraulic injection injury, and um, yeah, you'll, you'll see why you should not mess with this stuff unless, unless you kind of know what you're doing. So this particular video, we're just going to break this cylinder down completely, go over all the components inside, and I'll show you the tools that I use. Uh, to break cylinders down and um, maybe we'll learn something maybe we won't and I'll just look like a dummy so um, yeah let's get into that we'll start with pulling the uh, pulling the gland off and uh, we'll, we'll show the tools that are involved in that little procedure so to start off we'll go with the most common style cylinder I see at least um, which you would have to remove the gland with a pin spanner and basically what happens is there's two little two or four little holes usually 90 degrees off or 180 degrees off and you would take this here pin spanner right there and you'd stick it in the holes and you would use that to wrench on the um, the gland uh, these particular ones are blue point you can see right there um, you don't need blue point blue point mostly is just rebranded tools uh, pretty much anything you could find on Amazon that seems like it's pretty decent will work for these now moving on um, we have these style hook wrenches which are the ones that are actually intended for this style cylinder um, I just keep this uh, small and this uh, larger one um, these are the only sizes I ever really needed for doing what I do and basically the way this works is this little little hook right there um, that would clamp onto the end of the cylinder into this this little groove and uh, yeah you would use that to loosen the cylinder um, as far as success goes with these and these um, it, 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 it varies sometimes you get lucky in these work and sometimes they don't which will lead me to my next tool and here is the end all be all which is the pipe wrench um, these work when when nothing else does um, most most uh, people who have any experience with hydraulic cylinders usually end up going to a pipe wrench. These particular ones are snap-on uh, PWZ3 and these are PWZ2s I, I guess and the, these are the best pipe wrenches I've ever used bar none hands down um, you're not going to change my mind uh, these things are great uh, this particular one I've done up to six inch cylinders on and if this doesn't get it loose, nothing else will. So um, these these um, pipe wrenches are made by a company named Bahak. I can't remember the actual name of it, but it's a company that Snap-on owns that Snap-on rebrands. Um, I'm sure these these two wrenches right here probably cost me uh, close to two hundred dollars when I bought them, and um, they're they're half price if you buy the Bahak brand. Uh, I can't. I can't remember the name of the name of them. But yeah, if you buy that, if you buy that particular brand, they're probably going to be at least half the price. Um, uh, even if they're half the price, they're they're worth every every cent, especially if you're doing a lot of a lot of stuff like this. So I would highly recommend getting getting a good set of pipe wrenches if you're going to be doing these. I will link these if I can find them on Amazon. I'll link them in the, the uh, description there. So if you're interested, you can take a look at these. Now, I, I would say the place where hydraulic cylinders vary the most as far as disassembly goes is the gland end, which is this little cap that holds holds everything in there. Uh, this particular one, like I said, is meant for the, um, the little hook wrench here. Um, like I said with the other ones, some of them use the little little pin spanners. Um, like I said, there's so many different different ways of these cylinders coming apart. Some of them will actually have a set screw in them. Make sure you get that out before you start twisting it because um, that would cause problems if you didn't remove that. Some of them have little wires that go through the cylinder that you have to feed out as you're, as you're loosening it. Uh, John Deere's got some real goofy shit with their cylinders. Um, 
snap rings you got to ram the gland it's 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 a mess but this one right here um this particular style where you just screw it off is the most common style that you will run into um if you're trying to rebuild one of these cylinders so it makes for a good example but um yeah like i said if you get to the point where, where you're not 100 percent sure how it comes apart see if whoever you're buying the packing kit from will give you a parts breakdown of the cylinder some of them are pretty good and they'll actually show you an exploded view of it and kind of give you an idea of how it comes apart or you can just go on youtube and find some jerk off like me who's already done it and he'll show you how to do it so let's get this thing mounted up mounted up in the vise and um we'll uh crack this bad boy loose and start start pulling it apart one one thing i did forget to mention um if you do have to break a cylinder uh gland loose um it's better to do it in the machine with the pin still in it just crack it loose you know you got your your hose is plugged off and it's not hooked up to the machine anymore there's not any weight left on it and it's just sitting there freely um reason being is the pins are the best vice you'll get for uh, cracking one of these loose because you know that's what they're there for to hold this thing in place so um like i said if if you got a good pipe vice that works but i'm a road guy and i don't necessarily have one of those available to me especially with the limited space in my van i try not to carry more tools than i than i need to on a regular basis so let's try the right way first and we'll get into more creative ways to crack this thing loose um hopefully the camera doesn't bounce too much when i'm when i'm beating on this thing so uh yeah, let's get into that you got the hook down here let's try some percussive persuasion did it come I'm going to mark the gland in the, sil in the barrel so I can see if it's actually turning. Little little line right there. Got a punch, we're going to stick it here and whack it with this guy. That ain't doing shit all in a fucking bag of potato chips. Alright, so I tried to be polite, so now now we're gonna have to do it do it the hard way. And uh, I got a pry bar sitting down here to keep it from rotating. And then I'm gonna put the big old pipe wrench down on here, and we're just gonna crank that fucker loose. So we, we got it all apart. Um, we had some, some casualties of war right here. Uh, don't worry about that. That'll that'll buff right out with a with a little angle grinder. And uh, we got to take this here nut off, which is just a um, castle nut with it with a cotter pin going through it. So that shouldn't be too bad. And if you're wondering, this little piece right here, this is actually a um, a stopper, so the the uh, mass doesn't tilt too far forward. So. Let's uh, finish taking this apart and then we'll bust down the actual individual components. I'm grabbing it with the crimper part, uh, just in case you're wondering. <laughs> these are old anyway, these are my these are my beaters, so I'm not really too worried about messing them up. There that goes. Got a 
Uh, so there we go. I'm not sure how much of that we got. Um, uh, my, my neighbor decided to come over and give me a little chit chat and I think I hit stop when I hit record and record when I hit stop. So I missed a little bit of it. Um, like I said, this, I mean, probably the hardest one I've had to come apart in a long time. And of course it had to be on video. So you, you got the full, the full uh, <laughs> sensation there. Uh, I did end up putting a little bit of heat on the end of the barrel. Um, I cautiously use heat when I'm taking apart cylinders. And the reason is, is because if you, un if you heat this barrel unevenly and you get it like hot, hot, what'll happen is, is as you're trying to twist it loose, some spots will be hotter and some spots will be cooler. And I know people are like, oh, I could, I could heat it evenly. You don't know because you, you don't have infrared vision. And um, what'll happen is that the threads will stretch on the hotter spots than it will on the cooler spots just unevenly. And then it'll cause this gland to get all galled up and then you gotta replace the barrel and the gland at that point in time, you, you gotta replace the cylinder. So you gotta do what you gotta do sometimes. And like I said, there's, do it with caution is, is what I'm getting at. I'm not saying you shouldn't do it. I'm just saying, be careful when you're doing it. So this is cylinder completely broken down. We got the barrel end. Uh, that's the part with the cracked weld. Uh, this would be considered the rod right here. And that's just got a, um, a chrome finish on it to keep uh, to keep it from rusting. Uh, this, like I said, this is just a spacer to keep the mast from tilting too far forward. It just floats in there. It does nothing aside from be a spacer. Uh, this would be your piston. Your piston goes on the end down here. And the hydraulic oil pushes on this side. Pushes that rod this way. And when it pushes on this side, it pushes that rod this way. And that's where the, uh, the two hydraulic uh, lines hook up to the cylinder. Uh, this is your gland end. This is nine times out of ten. This is what is why you're looking at one of these cylinders. And the reason being is because these are these are where they leak. Um, outside here, we got the different seals. That, well, we'll talk about those as we pull them out of there. But um, yeah, so let me get some tools together. We'll start pulling these seals apart, get some shit out of the way so we can lay stuff out and uh, we'll, we'll do that. All right, so let's start off with the, the easy one and that's the piston right here. Um, there is a seal down here. It's actually an O-ring on the bottom of the rod and that just keeps the oil from slipping past here, slipping past the piston and causing the cylinder to internally leak. Um, these are snap-on um, hydraulic seal. I guess they'd be picks, um, pry bars, whatever, whatever you want to call them. I got these from Snap-on years ago. Uh, so long ago that actually there is a part number there. It's uh, PAK five six two seven seven zero uh these are great i've had these for years um you could probably go on amazon and get something just as good the key feature with these is that there's no sharp edges on anything and um you're less likely to damage a seal putting it in or taking it out with one of these you can use a small flathead screwdriver um no problem with that you just got to be extra careful like i said with these i just like these because they're, they're nice and easy you can slip them up underneath the sil the, um, the seals and O-rings, you don't have to worry about ripping them. And I'm always really careful taking taking O-rings off just in case I screw up putting one of the ones back in. And uh, yeah, that's it. So the actual piston here, uh, this is a fairly simple one. Uh, you got these two blue things right here. These are wear rings and these just keep metal to metal contact from inside the cylinder barrel as it's going back and forth. Um, these come off fairly easily. Like that. And then actually inside here is where you have the actual cup seal that holds the pressure inside the barrel for going back and forth. And there you go. And now this is a bi-directional seal so this particular seal doesn't have a direction some seals you do like the one in here we'll show you that and um, yeah so this one doesn't have a direction always be careful when you're pulling this stuff apart to make sure 
you're watching as it comes apart just to make sure that there's not a specific way they need to go back in. And I always like to do, just as a matter of habit, even though I know, when I take the old stuff apart, I just kind of stack it up the way I took it apart so that way there if I get confused putting it back together, I, I kind of know how I took it apart. Now, the gland end. This is usually the culprit, like I said, to, uh, to all your problems. Uh, this particular one has a O-ring at the bottom, and it also has a wire ring, not a wire ring, Jesus, good Lord, a uh, backup ring on the bottom here, which I just ripped, taking off. I said, be careful. But the backup ring, actually I didn't rip it, that's actually a two, that's actually a split in half, so I don't feel so bad. But um, whenever you have a backup ring and an O-ring like this, the O-ring goes towards the pressure and the backup ring's on the opposite side of it. And the backup ring just kind of gives the O-ring support, for lack of a better description. So, got that. Now, on the top here, this is what they call a wiper seal. And essentially what this does... It does what it says it does. It wipes the dirt off of the rod as it goes up and down. Uh, usually these will fail and you won't even notice because these don't hold any hydraulic pressure. Um, these are just to clean clean the rod off to keep the dirt from getting down inside the cylinder and onto the, uh, the seal down here in the bottom. Now all the way down here in the bottom we got a cup seal And we got a backup ring for the cup seal too, which is being a pain in my balls. There it is. Right here. This is a split too. All right, so uh, cup seals, the open side of the cup, you can see right here, I'm putting my screwdriver in, open side of the cup always goes towards the pressure. The closed side of the cup doesn't get pressure, so it would go in like this. Oil pressure's on this side, there's no pressure on this side. And then we got one more O-ring up here, which doesn't necessarily hold pressure, but holds the dirt out of the top of the gland. And that goes on the top. But I mean, you can see, like I said, the way, you can see how you could easily get some of these o-rings confused with each other and these seals and that's why I always say take it apart and put it out in a nice nice way where you could uh, lay it out so you know how you so you know how you took it apart and another thing I didn't mention too I always do cylinders on pig mats like this just so stuff stays clean because you don't want to get dirt and grime into this stuff and cause problems down the road nothing's worse than having to do it twice now, as far as reassembly goes, um, it's just backwards of what you just did. Um, I will make some some points to say with any of these seals. You kind of want them to be a little bit wet. Normally, I would dry these off and spray them down with brake clean to make sure they were good and clean, but this cylinder is never going to function again. But normally, I'll give a little bit of coat of oil on these cylinders or these cylinder parts before I reassemble them just to make sure everything, make sure everything doesn't pinch when you're putting it together and you don't over stretch an o-ring because sometimes you could pry a little too hard and it makes it big and then it doesn't want to go back down to its shape and um, you know these wear rings some of these wear rings these are some type of plastic some of them make them out of like a um, fibrous material and they're split in half and some of them are not split in half they look like a seal but um, they are not a seal and if you put those on it's a good idea to put those in hot water so they become a little soft, put them on, and then once you get them on, put like a um, piston um, ring compressor on them just to cinch them back down so they kind of go back to their original shape because if not, it can be a pain in the butt to get those to go back into the barrel. So these tools, as far as putting the gland back together, the only real specialty tool specialty tool you're going to need, um, you really don't even need these. I've, I've done cylinders years 
without them, but it's like one of those where you've been all my life type of tools, and I was aware of them, I just never bought them. And uh, this year I actually bought these off of Amazon. These were cheap. I think they were like 30 bucks for this set. I'll link these if you're interested in the old uh, comment section there or the uh, description. But uh, yeah, essentially how this works is you just take the uh, seal and again, open side of the cup up because that's going towards the pressure. And you put it on the tool right. That always helps. So you kind of lip it in there like that. And then you just put these little ears around. And it makes the seal smaller so it'll fit inside the hole. This one isn't that bad um, because it's right at the end, but sometimes they, they put these cup seals deep inside the cylinder. And getting one of these, especially on a smaller cylinder, can be a super pain in the ass. So. And we're going to leave this ring out because it's bent. I don't feel like messing with it. And like I said, this cylinder is never going to work again. So yeah, you just put the thing in here like this. Take the tool out. It's already in place. And then you just kind of pop it into place and Bob's your uncle. Um, wiper seal. This wiper seal is pretty simple. You just stick it inside the uh, stick it inside the groove there, and that's good to go. Some of these are press fit. You got a little metal metal shield around them and you gotta you gotta hammer them in but this one's pretty easy and again coming back together backup ring o ring make sure everything's in place another thing too you want to make sure when you're putting these o-rings on that you don't have a twist in them if you have a twist in them it'll cause them cause them to leak prematurely and then the uh, outer gland ring and this backup ring screwed too so we'll get rid of that and that's it as far as the seals go um, yeah that's I didn't miss anything so we're cool oh wait I forgot that o-ring right there again this thing's never gonna run again so I'm a little usually a little more careful with these so at this point in time, you know, we're ready to go back together. Um, normally what you want to do, I keep this little oil can I got from Harbor Freight. It's like five bucks, I think, for it. And I would kind of give a little coating of oil on the rod. And I'd give the, the seals a little bit of juice just to keep anything from binding when I'm putting it back together and, and ripping seals. Um, one thing you do need to keep in mind when you're, when you're putting these things back together, Excessive force is not your friend. So if you're pushing too hard, you're probably gonna rip a seal. So keep that in mind. Oh, there you go, we got that back in. Now, of course, we got our spacer, which goes on there. I said, most cylinders aren't gonna have one of these, so keep that in mind. And and we got the old pistoni. Which I don't feel like fighting with getting on. And again, just to be clear, um, if this was going back onto a machine that I was working on, my little uh, pipe wrench marks, I would have gotten out this guy. Wizard them down before I put the seals on it and made everything look nice and smooth and when I put it back together hit it with a little bit of black spray paint to hide my barbarism <laughs> on this gland and um, yeah we just slapped it back together put this inside the barrel which is over here again put the barrel a little bit of a um, little bit of oil down inside there to help everything get lubricated and I would have also came through here and cleaned these threads out just to make everything go back together. Uh, as far as Loctite on these um, on these threads, if it's not on any on it, when I take it out, I'm not putting any back on it when I put it back together. Um, I find most, most of these don't have any Loctite on them because it's just such a pain in the ass and there's no rotational force on this cylinder. So technically it really shouldn't come loose. So I think that's probably why they usually don't do it. But like I said, even if, if there was Loctite on it, I would put it on very sparingly just so the next guy 
didn't have to beat his head in to get it apart. So that is a, a quick video about hydraulic cylinders, as quick as I can make it. Hopefully it's not too long. Uh, there's a lot to these things, like I said in the beginning of the video. I, I just can't go into all of it and make this video um, not two hours long. Um, we went over seals, generally how they how they work, where they go. Uh, tips and tricks, taking these things apart and some tools. The tools, like I said, if I can find them on Amazon, I will link them down in the comments. Um, I only link tools that I've, I've used before and I like or stuff that I'm trying and, you know, it's from a trusted brand. So uh, I'm not trying to sell tools here, but people always ask for links. So there you go. I'm giving links. Um, as far as the microphone goes, I noticed in my last video, this microphone picks up just about every single breath I take and it sounds like I'm gasping for air. I assure you, I am not. Um, I'm a bit of a mouth breather because when I was 16, I broke my nose. Um, nothing cool like being in a fight. I walked into a door like a jackass. So I'm trying to consciously not huff and puff into this microphone. So uh, we'll, we'll see how that turns out. I haven't edited this thing yet, but um, yeah, so that's it. Um, as always, any questions, drop them down in the comments. Um, thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.